like Mike, I did worked on Travolta and he's doing this, doing that. I would say to him, you know, they knew I was gay. They say, why are you telling me? <laughs> Tell the boss. Tell right. the boss. Right. So they told the boss or whatever. They said that they didn't want to work on him anymore. Mm -hmm. And they were banding together as mm -hmm. the massage therapist that if he wanted a massage mm -hmm. and they were going to book him with a mail, that they were going to be on the list at the front desk that if he requests the mail, that they better not request one of them. Eighties, nineties, no, in the two thousands. Oh, two thousands. Oh, oh shit! This is after Pulp Fiction. Just put in there, just <laughs> after put in Pulp there. Fiction, John yeah. Travolta, Michael Caputo will come right up. I think oh, it was man. like it was before you started your business, right? I'm guessing. No. Oh, like because that's how they found me online with my website. Ah, okay. No, it's while I had my business, I was out of the spa. I was gone from the spa. So maybe like two. They were doing a major renovation. Two thousand two, three, four. Somewhere There's around. a lot of scandals. I got you. Mm. All right. Yeah, yeah, this is pre putting This is around the time he was in Punisher. Oh, shit. So why he was probably pissed off so much in the movie, man. That makes sense. He was an angry man in that movie. <laughs> Does my name come up with him? Uh, Mike Caputo, second massage therapist, fourth massage therapist. You know what's funny? When I first looked up um, your name, uh, who came up? I think it was like a, somebody running Trump, for like senator. Or son of a, somebody works with Trump, yeah. got the same name. Yeah. And another guy that writes 35 free Christian books. I was dying. Of all people to be connected with me, Trump <laughs> and the Christian books. I, I see it here. It says attorney Travolta was never banned from the hotel yep. spot. So I think that was his attorney yeah. speaking. And he says, him. I was just a, what he called, disgruntled employee. I loved working there. I was, I would, if I was disgruntled, would I be there 16 years? Exactly. What Nobody's was I disgruntled about? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, we can still go though, right? Yeah, yeah. He said we could go. Right. He's not here yet. No, it rolls on. It's still filming though. Okay, films. but you can right. edit that, yeah, right? Yeah, they you edit it out. Yeah. All right. So when when I when I was with uh, when I was seeing Travolta, I had walked into the uh, in between massages. I would always go into the bathroom, take a leak, whatever, come out. And Travolta was in the locker room that day, with a towel around him. Mm -hmm. Okay, like he was going to take a shower or go into the steam or whatever. Pool was upstairs, so he wasn't going swimming. Mm -hmm. So when I passed him, it was almost like. I said, hello, sir. I didn't say nothing, John Travolta or anything. Hello, sir. And I passed him and I went by the sinks, washed my hands. And then I went to take a leak and I said to myself, dear God, please don't let him stand. Hope he doesn't come in here and stand next to me. I really hope he doesn't. Mm -hmm. And he didn't. He walked past me and he went through a door mm -hmm. where they had the steam room and the sauna. And I know they had a water fountain in there. And I saw him, I peeked out there and I saw him go into the sauna. And I said to myself, and then two other guys followed him in there. And I said to myself, I know what goes on in all the saunas, in all the gyms in New York City. I know what I've seen all my life. I know what's going to be going on in there. Happy endings. So whatever the case is, no, this was just a sauna. Well, you know, you know, with towel so you on just you, sit you've been in the sauna and jacuzzi. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? There, yeah. This is the sauna, the dry one with no mist. Right. And oh, it had okay. a glass door in front of it. So I took the water and... They didn't hear me come in because I sort of, you know, went in very slow. <laughs> and then I went over and I sort of like went and looked in and I saw them all pull back because they were all masturbating in the, uh, in the sauna. Oh, wow. And that's something I did not tell the Daily News. Mm. John Exclusive. Travolta and Exclusive two other here on <laughs> Exclusive. your ELV podcast. John Travolta okay, and two other dudes Travolta. in the back <laughs> in the hotel sauna Masturbating <laughs> in the sauna at the peninsula. This is pre-Punisher. And yes. this is after <laughs> Pulp Fiction, yes. John Travolta. Yes. That is funny. Okay. <laughs> so that's what I saw. And I didn't even bother reporting him. Yeah. Because I said to myself, they're not going to do anything anyway. So I kept my mouth shut. Pretty because much. I know what I used to do in the saunas. When I used to go to the gyms, what was going on? Yeah. I'm mean, all the guys on the down low. That's they would fool around in the sauna. Yeah. And would tell the girlfriend, I'm going to the gym. She didn't think anything of it. They went to the gym, <laughs> but they were fooling around before they left in the sauna or the steam room. The quickies. Oh, shit. No, yeah, I'm serious. So that's two that, workouts. Is, that, that is what I'm talking about. That's two workouts so in one. I just want to read the first chapter of uh, uh, the first paragraph of the first chapter. <laughs> yeah, sure, so, sure. Just to... Oh, wait. Before you do that, though, I kind of wanted to do like a quick comparison. So, okay. Speaking of celebrities, right? You said you work with Geraldo and Joan, Joan Rivers, Rivers, right? Mm -hmm. So, if you could compare them to anybody like that today, who would you compare them to? Geraldo and Joan? Mm hmm. Oh. And then kind of just explain how it was working with both of them. It was it was a job that I wish I never left. Mm. 
It was after them that I went to massage school. Okay. But I wish I had never left that that job. It right. was working in the media, like all the stuff that you guys do here, mm -hmm. is is just what I'm most passionate about. Because there's always something going new every day. For sure, for and sure. they did more new stuff, and they did scandalous stuff. Mm -hmm. When I worked for Joan River, when I worked for Joan Rivers, I would work in this in CBS. Um, I worked directly with her because I worked in promotions. But I was would be in the in the control room with the guys, and they were really nice there. And they had me working on this Sony thing where I they would be taping Joan's show live oh, that I could cool. take any picture of any frame. Mm -hmm. And at that time in that's 1990, dope. that was very ahead of its time. They had the most advanced equipment. Right. Now I'm sure they got miracle stuff down there now. For sure, probably. You know, yeah. more, more computerized. So I would be there if I see them have a guest like Aretha Franklin come on, I would take a picture, be able to keep all these pictures of Aretha, of you know, of any guest that Joan had on. So she had on Angela Bowie, mm. who was going to be... Uh, who had something to say to Joan, but they, she wouldn't give it on. So Joe would have her, Joan had her on her show, and he, she also had Howard Stern on the show. Now, Howard Stern knew me from being on his radio right. show with my father, right. but I don't think he knew I worked in the back there with, with Joan, you know, for Joan's show in Geraldo. Mm -hmm. So Angela Bowie had something to come out and say, and Joan couldn't get it out of her. Right. So she ends up saying, and when she came home one day, she found her husband, David Bowie, in bed with Mick Jagger. That's true. Okay? Like, and I got Joan, the moves, Mick Jagger? That, from the Rolling Stones. Yeah. Oh, the, oh, yeah. The song, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> what song? The, like, you know, I got the moves, Mick Jagger. Like, Mick Jagger, right? That's yeah, 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 yeah. Well, then they put on the headline, Dancing in the Sheets. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay? Because oh, oh. that was one of the songs. By, by Bowie or, or, the, or the Stones. I don't catchy, remember. catchy. <laughs> so uh, so uh, I, I took a picture when, when Joan jumped up like, went like that <laughs> as she said it, and I took the picture, and I showed my boss, and I had to go down to the flower shop where I worked for 10 years mm -hmm. in the World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. So that was only there as an intern. Right. You know, because I liked working around that, and I had gone to school for that to be like a, like a, I wanted to be like a Larry King, you know, interview famous people. And I went to school for that, and they didn't place me. They said the best thing to do is be an intern, and I got an intern job over there. Nice. And I, so I spent time whatever I could do, and then I would go straight down to my job. So it was like the weekend, and he said to me, Mike, do me a favor. He said, he said, take this envelope to somebody over at the Daily News. If you can. If you can't, just bring it back on Monday. Right. I said, okay, no problem. So I, you know, I wanted to do good for my boss because I liked working there, hoping they would hire me. Right. And I brought the envelope and I got in, got in touch with the guy and forgot all about it. When I came in Monday morning and I got to the floor of Joe River Show and I walked into where all the offices were, they all were standing up and everybody was looking at me. They, my boss came running over to me. I said, what happened? I'm going to get fired. What did I do wrong? <laughs> he said, Mike, that envelope I gave you made the front pages of the Daily News that picture of Joan jumping up, it sent her ratings for the show to the roof. You got it on the front page of the Daily News. The CEO of the company called me up. They hired me on the spot. Who's this guy? Who's, who brought that picture? Right. Some intern. And I got it on the, that picture on the Daily News. Nice. So, you know, I can't compare anybody today. I don't know what the business is like today. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's, it's just as exciting. Yeah. But there were a lot of shows like Joan and Geraldo back then. Doing talking about scandal stuff. What about that guy that they were fighting one time? One time, Harada got his nose broken. On, to, I think he had white supremacist on. He got his nose broken. I mean, there was so much. There was a, another guy that anything went. You had white supremacist on. Mm -hmm. You had KKK people on the shows. There were so many of them and so many at that time, you know. But um, okay. so probably, I don't see all. The, I don't see those shows like that today. So, it's a different kind of a media. Yeah, now you see that yeah. stuff on social media, on Facebook, or all the, all the stuff that you would see True. on television. Which it's probably like was. Wendy Williams, The View. There stuff you like go. That. There it's you probably go. stuff like exactly, that. Exactly. A little exactly. bit watered down, but yeah, for sure. Right. And a guy killed himself, I think, from one of those shows because the guy said he had an attraction from one of the guys on one of those shows, and he ended up committing suicide. Okay. I think he was on the DL. Sheesh. It was just weird. It was just weird. But it was a great time. And I got that on the front page. That's how I got hired nice. in the media. But uh, so I'm just going to read the oh, first yeah, yeah. Go paragraph. For it. Go for it. May, may sure. I? Sir? Of course. Okay, this is from Chameleon. This is uh, the first uh, uh, paragraph. It sort of like sets the stage here. Uh, everyone has a persona or a public image. Oh, the name of the chapter is called DL by Default. Mm -hmm. It's the only chapter in the book that's not named after a song. 
Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. My first book, all the, all the chapters are also named after songs. Is that like intentional or? Intentional. Okay. I intentionally did that. Nice. And uh, when I talk about John Travolta in my book, I named it after the song Welcome Back. <laughs> From when he used to do uh, Welcome Back, Carter. Mm -hmm. You remember that song, Welcome Back? So that's why I named that chapter. Yeah. After. What kind of question was that? Huh? Yeah. He just told you he named it after every song. You won't tell me it wasn't intentional? I don't know. Maybe he just... I was I listening to music. for our educational system failing my colleague here. They definitely failed <laughs> yeah. me. They no, failed, no, no, no. They failed no, me no, no, no. terribly. I told you guys that <laughs> As we went to here. both the same high school. <laughs> Shall I say race? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, man. Everyone has a persona or public image. That doesn't necessarily mean that this seemingly transparent image totally represents one's true self. More often than not, people show another side of themselves to others in different settings. For example, one might reveal a familiar side of themselves to their family but not that same side to their friends or vice versa. Then there's another side that they keep hidden and very private that nobody sees except a select few. That particular secret I'm referring to concerns men on the down low, on the DL, living a double life. This is not an illusion or some rare phenomenon. It is an underlying truth and another facet of the male psyche. Through my revelations and lived experiences, I will show how many men regarding their sexuality, are forced to posture themselves on the world stage somewhat like a chameleon. There won't be any exaggeration or sugarcoating in my testimony. I am not here to shame, denigrate, lie, or out anyone by name either. I am also not suggesting that all men are disguised or living on the DL as an alternative lifestyle. I am writing about this facade to explain why this deception is prevalent in every race, creed, and culture because of the world we live in. Mm -hmm. And what I had also, my book goes into, uh, is about the identities, how we went from the, the, gay, the gay community to uh, the LGBT community. In my day, we didn't have all the names or identities that we call certain people right. in our community today. Mm -hmm. There were just five terms used in my day. Straight, gay, lesbian, bisexual, and trannies. Then there were the drag queens who were gay guys who regularly performed at some clubs and dressed up as famous women singers and limp sync to their songs. So somebody might dress up like Diana Ross, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Or Donna Summer, or yeah. Judy Garland, or Barbara Streisand in my day. Mm -hmm. Now they dress up as Beyonce and <laughs> right. they, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? Right, they were right. like the RuPaul's of that time. That's right. Okay? By the way, RuPaul looks better as a girl than does as a guy. <laughs> I looked at him, I assume as a guy, I said, okay. I assume as a girl, I say, oh, he looks better as a girl. It's my opinion. Okay, so cross-dressers was another term that was familiar with, I was familiar with, and heard about. They were ma mainly straight men who enjoyed dressing up in women's clothing. It didn't necessarily mean that they were gay. Right. Okay, it was a fetish. Mm -hmm. I understood this behavior as just a fetish of heterosexual men that had nothing to do with their sexuality. I knew that there could be some exception to the rule though. Okay, but ultimately those men were not gay. Tranny was another slur used, now you call them transgender people mm -hmm. or a transgender person. Tranny is a slur, right. to use the word tranny. Uh, slur used when you meant a transgender person. Those people feel that their personal uh, identity and gender don't correspond with their birth sex. And I talk about, out of all the words around the, the Q word, the LGBTQ, the mm -hmm. Q in LGBTQ means queer, mm -hmm. or also means questioning. Mm -hmm. So I accept it as questioning. Right. I don't really accept it as queer. When they want to call my community the queer community, I ain't having it. Right. But like I said, the new generation's got to Take that. Speaking and I of also that. talk about all the slurs used. Mm -hmm. I wanted to just mention this because I know that you guys can appreciate this. The words faggot, fag, and queer meant the same thing to all the gay men during my era. Queer is another pejorative term that equates with the words nigga, coon, spick, chink, gook, kung flu, Kike, sand nigga, lesbo, dyke, cunt, fag hag, and retard. All mean the same things. Yeah. 
They are all hurtful, contemptuous, disparaging, and as far as I'm concerned, in the same family. None of those words are terms of endearment. They never were and never will be. People who use those slurs are not telling you that they love you. They are telling you that they hate you. Mm -hmm. I rest my case and on that. to continue on with the LGBTQ community, what do you think about the whole movement behind it? There's, there's both sides debating one who are for it and there's no problem with it. They want them to have equal rights, you know, be, be allowed to express themselves in any way, shape or form. But then there are others who don't necessarily agree with the way they go about it, how it's forced or how is you're just not listening to all sides. Like that was the whole point of the general argument, you know, listen to everybody, you want to be heard, I want to be heard. But now what some people notice is that when you try to come debate with that community, it's just, they shut you down right away. They're not listening to you. Some would say they don't even function with logic. Not all of them, but some. So what would be your take on that? Someone from an older generation that had to deal with them, I would say in a much harsher rate. Well, I don't think that the younger generation is having it. Mm. I don't think they're, they're, they're going to take the BS. Mm -hmm. They know what it's all about. Most of the people that are against my community, I would say the majority, are all uh, religious people of some religious faith. For mm -hmm. sure. And they say we're an abomination of the Bible, that we're going to hell, mm -hmm. and that uh, all we're freaks. And like I had said to... Uh, uh, the gentleman I was speaking to before, we were in the mental, in the medical books as a mental illness until 1973. Yeah, I remember that. Okay. So, you know, um, all we want is to have the same rights and we haven't gotten the equality a bill passed, even though we got the marriage, the marriage equality. No. Uh, we haven't got the equality bill passed and uh, they're trying to take the rights away uh, from us. I'm glad that Biden signed another thing because Clarence Thomas... Uh, the black Supreme Court justice in the uh, in the Supreme Court was suggesting that we take away uh, gay marriage. And I was looking at him saying, he's married to a white woman. Oh, yeah, that Does deep. he not realize, <laughs> let's take away his interracial marriage exactly. because interracial marriage wasn't legal to 67. Mm -hmm. And even when they made it legal in 67, mm -hmm. it was still shunned upon by both the black community and the white community. Yeah. Like so, still you know, I, like, you know, like, well, you know, and he's supposed to be a Christian and he was the one that was involved with being all in that sex scandal with uh, Anita Hill. Sexual harassment all comes from that. And that's why when you go for jobs, they make you watch a film or they make you fill a paper out so yeah. that there's no sexual harassment on the job. Right. That you can't get to the point now you can't even tell a woman, oh, that dress looks nice on you. Well, you look pretty today, yeah. Anna. That's and insane. without getting sexually harassed. Exactly. So yeah. that's where it stems from. That, 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 uh, what they oh, call sure. that, that black, that black white supremacist. Or well, the Uncle Tom, whatever they want to call it. I heard they call it, they say it's only sexual harassment if you're ugly. Yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, so, up, huh? you know, uh, he wanted to do that. You know what I'm trying Fuck to say? <laughs> and I, I Playing the game of hardball. Yeah, it's, it's fucked up. What you mean? Yeah. <laughs> and I just, you know, I just don't know why, you know, the Christians, they just, they just cannot leave us alone. You know what yeah. I mean? We're not trying to take away. I believe in religious freedom. Mm -hmm. I just don't believe in religion. And every time I say that to somebody, they go, oh, you're an atheist? No. I know, right? I tell them that God has nothing to do with religion. Religion is another business like Apple and Verizon, and God doesn't need a middleman. So if I want to talk to God in my bathroom, I can. Right. I don't have to say a, a memorized prayer. I can say, hey, God, you know what? Like, what's, what's happening, man? Help me through this. I don't got to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be. You know what? I had to memorize all that crap back then, right. well, nor do I have to read the Bible. Oh, man, because God doesn't, no. God doesn't read the Bible. God doesn't read the Bible. That's what they want to say. You read the Bible, it says homosexuality is a sin. I said, I don't want to read the Bible because God doesn't read the Bible. God reads hearts. So you can't Ooh. call yourself a Christian a or even American. God reads hearts. Right? God read reads Bible. hearts. I, I mean, you that. can't call yourself a Christian or an American if you hate black people or hate gay people. You can't. And you can't throw your kids to the curb. Okay? You want to say you're pro-life until your kids come around and tell you that they're in the LGBT community, and then you throw them to the curb, and they end up committing suicide, mm. and suicide being the uh, highest rate of suicide in the country is with the LGBTQ yeah. youth. Yeah. And you're calling yourself a Christian. So you're putting your religion in that book ahead of your own flesh and blood. Pretty much. It's you can't wild. call yourself a Christian. It's wild. Because Christianity is about love. It is. And you're supposed to emulate Jesus as close as you can. 
We're not perfect, we're humans. Yeah. They're not emulating Jesus Christ. I think people forget And let that. me let people just know this on your podcast. Mm -hmm. There are two qualifications to be in the KKK. Oh, shit. I'm just okay? coming. Let, this, let me just make this clear out there. Because a lot of the younger generation are asking this question. They can never answer the second one. What's the first qualification that's the most obvious? White. white. You got to have this color skin. And you got to be white, but a non-Jew. You right. can't be a Jew. They still don't They like hate Jews. Jews. Still. Okay. And the second qualification is? You got to be a Christian. You got to be a Christian or a believer in Jesus Christ. Any denomination. Crazy. Protestant, Baptist, whatever. Mm -hmm. So people say to me, Mike, those aren't real Christians. I said, well, they burn crucifixes on the lawns of the black people. I was wondering so what does that tell too. you? What does that tell you about the Christians in America? Who killed, lynched, raped, skinned all the black people in America? It's Christians. Christians. That's crazy. Okay? We know it. We, I'm calling you out. We <laughs> know it. And the black community knows it. And we're not going back. So keep back. Keep back with your Christian BS and be a real Christian, not be a counterfeit Christian, which most of you are, mm -hmm. okay? Especially the Christian right. Mm -hmm. And then, the, then I have some of the younger black generation, but my aunt's a Christian, Mike. I says, I know. And how do you think your aunt, who's black, became a Christian? Brainwashed. It was beat into her by the massa. So, yeah. you know, well, the ancestors, not your particular aunt, yeah, yeah, yeah. the ancestors. Yeah, we, we, because we got Africa we, we, didn't we got, have- We escaped. There we go. Yeah, yeah, you escaped. Africa uh -oh. didn't have we, Christianity we just, as religion. No. How could Christianity be the most dominant religion in the world the and the most answers. popular religion in the world without stealing, robbing, killing, crusades, the Inquisition, oh, yeah. and the Vatican never apologized for any of those crimes? Oh, they're like, we're good. Okay, and, and, and I want the religious people and all the people out there to know that we are not the groomers. We are not trying to groom your children to be homosexual. Just because yeah. your son or daughter reads a book that a penguin's got two moms or two dads doesn't mean that we're trying to turn them gay. Because I read a lot of straight books and it didn't turn me straight. Okay, so the other, <laughs> other thing, the other thing I also <laughs> want to say, because they come out with stupid things like this. Right. The other thing I want to say <laughs> is, imagine. is like, you know. Default sentence. <laughs> right? It'd be all of a sudden you're going to turn gay because, you know, penguins have got two moms and two dads. Exactly. So they're going to be gay now, all oh, of a sudden. Shit. You know, so let's just say who the real groomers are, okay? Because they always like to deflect to my community. You know who the real groomers are? Google it, uh, all Christians out there. Look at how many priests have molested and sexually abused, mm. abused young boys, and how it. many millions of dollars the church has paid out to the victims and the families, and those are the ones that got caught. And when the Vatican knew about this going on, what did the Vatican do? Instead of defrocking the priest, they take the priest from the parish in Brooklyn and put the priest in the parish in, in, in Philadelphia somewhere and move it around again. to do the same thing. And a lot of those people that were abused when they were young boys or altar boys or whenever they were by the priest, okay, are still living and suffering with it at people at, that got to be my age, okay? Yeah. So don't come at my community and call us the groomers because we know you've been leading that parade for sure. centuries. And we know the Vatican goes on Rent-A-Boy and hires the male hustlers and has sex parties and with drugs out there in the Vatican. So we know what it's, we know what time it is. All types of bars, but <clears throat> happen. No bars, oh. just what time? We got time. Fire. Still got time. Uh, fire. Still got no, time, guys. No, we're gonna uh, we're gonna end it I'm on hot the, now. The, I'm hot. He's on fire. I'm all worked up. Can we, can we do the next show? <laughs> but <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna end it on this topic. Okay. Uh, well, go this ahead. not topic, but so. If you have the ability to make a billboard, like, you know, it's going to be up on a highway oh, somewhere. Oh, okay. That would best describe your books, your life. Oh. Just you as a person at whole. What would what would that billboard say? Wow. Wow. God. So Eric asking the dope questions, man. I'm proud wow. Of That's a stumping question. I might have a future like in this. So much, you know, <laughs> whatever all I said, I would like, how could I put that in a couple of sentences mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. put it on a billboard? Fuck the Christians. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they say blasphemy, you know, you don't believe in God. Like, it's like, yeah, I believe in spirituality over doctrine. Let's just right. put it that way. I believe in spirituality and I don't have to go to pay to pray. And those churches, they're all tax exempt. They don't pay any taxes. So if they want to get into politics and start trying to take away my rights, mm. okay, then pay your taxes. No, pay your I, taxes, church. Pay your taxes. I saw okay? the priest got Audis and... 
double R's and all that shit. As far as the full board, I don't know. I mean, I, I so many I could do. Uh, but uh, got a couple of memes here that are kind of interesting. <laughs> the biggest danger of taking your child to a drag show is that a Christian could show up with a gun. Yep, fuck the Christians. You all want, <laughs> because you all want your guns and you all want your Bibles, right? You don't want to give up the AR-15s. You know, you're saying that we want to take away your guns, right? <laughs> so, you know, the only thing you got to worry about with the drag is a Christian showing up with a gun because all those people that go into the are all Christians. And remember what the Christians did in Alabama to those four black girls. In 1963, okay, they bombed they bombed the church and they killed four black girls. Remember that, and remember who killed Emmett Till, Christian. Remember the Christian woman who lied about Emmett Till, okay, about Emmett Till whistling and flirting with her, and what the Christians did, how they lynched him and put him on the bottom, and they made a movie about it. All right, so we know all that, and if we don't want to teach our kids in the school about any of the gay history or the black history, mm -hmm. okay. We're gonna teach them through movies like Whoopi Goldberg said. We'll teach them through the movies. We'll teach them through video. They can go on the phones. They can go on their phones. Any books they ban to any kids out there listening, go read every book that they ban because they don't want you to know the truth because they think that their little old white kids are gonna be traumatized when Miss uh, Ruby Bridges had to be escorted into a white school by the, uh, uh, the National Guard because she was desegregating the schools. The first little six-year-old girl, while they called her the N-word and threw watermelon and crap at her and rocks at her because she was a, a, a person of color. Okay? So get with it, Christians, because we know what time it is. I think that's the billboard right there. <laughs> it is, man. <laughs> but uh, we, we can't thank you enough for stopping by. Yeah. Uh, you can plug your book one more time if you want. Okay, so the book is Chameleon. Believe me, if they got this, if this was a number one bestseller, they'd be banning my book. <laughs> they would be banning my book. Chameleon, uh, a memoir, michaelcaputoauthor.com is my website where you could find uh, both of my books. Yes, sir. But we appreciate you for stopping by. Thank you uh, for your time. Definitely Thank hope you. to have you back again. It's Eric again. It's King it's Rob, Rob over there. If it's still here, um, I applied to the KKK like a few weeks ago. They haven't gotten back. <laughs> oh, hold on a second. Wait a minute. I got to mention one more thing. Uh, uh, Spike Lee movie, mm -hmm. Black Klansman. Did you see it? Yeah, I saw it. Okay. What would you think of that? that? Yeah, pretty cool, right? Yeah, man. Great movie, that. right? I definitely need to watch it. He said that. the way they pronounce certain words. <laughs> He's yeah. like, so how do they yeah. pronounce it? Certain, right? Exactly. <laughs> right? You know, they just let the R roll up. <laughs> <laughs> they got the cast in the yeah. back just like, really? <laughs> yeah. And watch A Jungle Fever. Did you see Jungle Fever? I haven't seen it. I've heard it. Oh, I gotta watch you got to look at the scene with when the Italian father finds out his girl, his, his daughter. Yeah. Did you see that scene? Yeah. That's a true scene. That wasn't that, uh, was... that wasn't exaggerated by Spike Lee. That is on point of what an Italian father would do to his daughter, beat the crap out of her, okay, and Bananas. kick her out of the house if she so much as went near or spoke to a black guy. Bananas. I Bananas. lived in Bensonhurst. I know what I know. What it's like. Shit. But. Uh, yeah, we gotta go. <laughs> okay. Pieces. Okay. That's it? So I can talk tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, go, 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 go. Yeah, you go, you go, man. Save it while I'm you fucked. Did I say anything wrong? Did I get too crazy? No, bro. I get very, very hot. That was perfect. This is probably our best episode ever. By far. Really? Yes, definitely. I hope, I don't know what they're going to say, but don't block the comments. No. That was just Rob and Eric and Rob, make them, make them say, old white faggot, I don't care. It's not going to bother me. Don't worry, I'm used to that. Well, Just let it come through. Let you, it come through. With YouTube or anything like that, you're not allowed to post those stuff anymore. Right? Yeah, they, There's somebody viewing oh, those things, so they, they, stop it, they block them? no, they delete them right away. They delete yeah. them, ban your account. So Instagram, all social media, they don't allow any type of like. Like where they censor it, or they just banter your camera. Yeah, it's probably a short, like like a promotional right. clip and everything like that, but not but not like a full episode. I hope you got my voice. Hope it was in front of the Michael Kagan. I know. Yeah, but I'm like I said, guys, I could I can go on and we could talk about you know whatever. Right. I want to tell you to read this too. You know, I just want to let you guys. This is I, in, I work in a Jewish museum, and I was telling them I don't know if I told you guys. Mm -hmm. They are a Holocaust museum. We're the third largest Holocaust museum in the world. Oh, sure. And they bring in kids by the droves, <clears throat> by the droves in school buses right. as a field trip. And we have uh, volunteers, uh, older people, some young, mm -hmm. that take the kids around and teach them about everything that happened in the Holocaust. Oh, God. Okay? That's dope. So, no, wait a second. Mm -hmm. That's teaching them mm -hmm. about the Jewish Holocaust. Mm -hmm. Now, we've had a black Holocaust. Jewish Holocaust, where did it happen? Mm. In Germany. Right. 
They're teaching the kids what happened in Germany, mm -hmm. but they don't want to teach the kids what happened with slavery in America. They're actually trying to stop those yeah. teachings. So yeah, they're like well, that's race they, theory yeah. that they're, they're trying to stop. Well, yeah. Well, trying to. They, they are stopping it in, in Florida. Yeah. They're doing, that's what they're trying to say. So this is what I say it in a different way, but when I saw this, I said to myself, it's exactly what I say, saying it a different way. That's why we all have to stick together. Agreed. Gay, straight, black. Agreed. Agreed. We have to stick together because this is how it goes. First they came for the communist, and I did not speak out mm -hmm. because I was not a communist. Right. Then they came for the socialist, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionist, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Right. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Mm -hmm. Then they came for me. And there was no one left to speak out for me. Mm -hmm. it's like that so I always say to everybody in the short term, the way I always say it, that's why I kept this. Today it's me. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow it'll be you. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay? For sure. But we could also discuss reparations. Uh, Remember see how that. the blacks were promised the 40 acres and the mule? No. They, okay, right? Yeah, that's not they coming. never got. They never got. They never, they never got it, right? But when that. the Jews got done with the, when they got done with the Holocaust, know what the Jews got? The Jews got a country. They got, uh, they got Israel, they and they got reparations from Germany. Okay. We can get shit. Okay. <laughs> Just want to let you know. And they got Brooklyn too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they got more than Brooklyn. <laughs> They yeah. got the media, they got everything. Am I right? Yeah, listen to Kanye. They own everything. I know. I heard Kanye. So actually, it did apply a few weeks ago. Did the fake name and all that shit, right? Like that. They actually actual like, website for you to apply? Oh, yeah, but it's secret and stuff like that. So they don't put what, KKK? KKK? Yeah, it's not KKK.com. Right? <laughs> well, I tell everybody, yeah. listen, the KKK, uh, they're, they're, not in, they're not in white robes anymore. They're in suits and ties. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. They elevated just a little bit. I talk about Bensonhurst, how it was white, and you had my dorm call me a nigga lover. I mean, I, I could I could tell you so many things. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, you know, the older you get, the more the more shit you see. You know, uh, you need to see more shit when you get older. You know? That is true. I'm a rapper because I think that's why I have something else to come to me. Yeah, they would have told us. That's why they gave us some like five thirty. Yeah. Yeah, Wolf, Wolf, Wolf got into really having a great conversation. He didn't stop talking. Wolf, Wolf. No, yeah, he said you live with a gay roommate. He said, you know, my first came from Texas. I go, oh, don't mention Texas. Almost had a heart attack. He started to laugh. I said, I hate, I hate that Greg Abbott that's in the wheelchair. He said, yeah. He said, I said, you know how he got in the wheelchair, right? I said, he got his karma of being such a racist. He said, how? I said, he was jogging in the fucking oak tree, fell on him. He's fucking paralyzed from the from the waist down. And I'm saying on my on my on my social media, he's not what he deserved for being such a fucking racist. I hate Texas. I hate Texas. I hate Mississippi. I hate Alabama. <laughs> I would never go down to those states. And I know people would go down to Mississippi and stuff. They said, Mike, it hasn't changed much down there. I've heard, yeah. Even Natasha was telling me a story. She said, I'll tell you a story about my aunt. She said, I went down to Alabama with my aunt. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. So I thought she was going to tell me something about her aunt, mm -hmm. you know, who's older than her, much right, older, right, right. and something happened. So she says, we're going into a gas station in Alabama to get gas. And she says, we hear people from the street beeping and beeping at us. We don't know why they were beeping at us. Right. So we go into the gas station and try to get gas. And I forgot if she said a white woman or a white guy came out and said, sorry, we don't serve people like you in here. Get out of here as fast as you can. Craziness. Okay? Yeah. I said to, so I said to Natasha, how long ago was that about? She said, Mike, about 15 years ago. I said, 15 years ago? Holy shit, that's in this century. Yeah. So it doesn't change. It hasn't changed. It just has evolved into a different way. Motherfuckers. Well, I'll tell you one thing about my museum. Uh, Rhonda, you know, they make money from, not by the people that come in to see the museum at the $18 charge. They make money to have events. We have city and state come in there. You know, like the mayor and stuff comes in there sometimes. Uh, we have uh, all people, uh, people get married there. Mm -hmm. And Ron DeSantis wanted to come there and talk. Mm -hmm. And it was in the papers. And my, my CEO of my museum said, there's no way in the world we're having him here. I don't care how much money he pays us. I'm not having him come here to spew his hate. Because a guy that was working upstairs with the CEO was handing in his pink slip. He said, you've got the Santa's coming. I can't work here no more. So the guy says, so the CEO says to him, he says, well, I got a transgender son. And I don't go along with what Ron, Ron DeSantis is saying. So I'm handing in. And the CEO said to him, no, 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 no. Ron DeSantis is not getting here. You don't have to leave here. Don't worry. And he said to him, thank you. I got that from your son. And that was in the papers, not that part of it, about the transgender son, but the part of us by not allowing the Santos to come and speak at the 
And uh, here's what we're going to do to make up for. Trump might get invaded on Tuesday. And the NYP is yeah. on high alert because they're thinking they're going to have riots and shit. Oh, yeah. one thing I want to also I wanna bring, I wanna bring to, it, yeah. I want to also bring this point to you guys because I know you'll agree with me because I can't say this to white people because <laughs> they, they always think that, you know, well, they always think I'm taking the side of the black man. Um, <laughs> listen to this. They all want to try to forget January 6th. Am I correct? They want they to try to make it look, yeah, they're trying to wash it down to make it look like it was a tourist attraction. So you, I don't mm -hmm. know how much you watch the news. They're trying to play January 6th down. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and I know, we both know, okay? We know what happened to the cops there. We know about the guy who got his head caught in the door. We know about a couple, one guy that commits suicide, who died the next day from a stroke or a heart attack. We all know the damage, what they did. They wanted to get after Pelosi. They wanted to do everything. They got in there. They wanted to kill all those flesh, people. They did. They wanted to kill, they, right? they wanted to kill okay. those people. Now, let blood. me ask you something. They got in and everything. They got in and everything, right? Exactly. They were like, we're so close, they want to hang Mike Pence. The only thing I'm sorry that they didn't do, I'm sorry that they didn't hang Mike Pence. Because he's an evangelical <laughs> Christian. He's against LGBTQ. His wife's a teacher. She refuses to teach any LGBTQ kids, or if they even have parents and the kids are straight, but the parents are LGBTQ, she refuses to teach them and they believe in conversion therapy. That's another subject. But anyway, so they all get in, right? You tell me, you tell me this answer. No, we're done. We're done. Oh, go, 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 go. You tell me this answer. If they were BLM, how many would have got in? They wouldn't have made it to the fucking front step. No, they would have no. all been shot. Am I right or am I wrong? Oh, yeah. We already okay. knew. We already knew. Okay. That's why we was all looking at it. And, oh, like, damn, they really made up. I'm just at like, a certain point, I was kind of cheering. I'm like, yo, let's see how far you can I, go, bro. I, I, like, I don't want to see you. I was like, yo, y'all in inside? You like, in her office? At that point, it's like, bro, we already know. Like, there's yeah. no way I could have did that yeah. at all. There was you this wouldn't have made it to the front. You wouldn't have made it to the first step. There was one black guy there. I don't yeah, know if you I saw it. There was one black guy. He had a book bag on yeah, Everybody yeah, yeah. said he was just there for a stimulus it's... check. <laughs> I was like, yo, you need to get the fuck out yeah, of here, bro. Some, listen, listen. Sometimes you got people in your own community that are self loathing. Mm -hmm. You're a self loathing true, black guy. There's self loathing gay people out there. For you sure. know, I can't understand when I see a person, uh, a, a black person, a woman, a gay person that's down with Trump. It doesn't make sense to me. They're kind of that, that down with Trump. It's a, sort of like an oxymoron to me. Pretty How much. could you be down with Trump? It's they were the, money, obviously, because I I seen that when I used to work by um, the World Trade Center, there was yeah. a, a Hispanic dude out there, you know, just there with the and literally he was homeless, but the sign said literally, you know, I support Trump, you know, he's helping me out and shit. I'm like, somebody. Yeah. I don't think as much as I think somebody <laughs> literally just came, paid him just to have that sign there and just right, to right. look. Up. I'm like, and he knows when Trump had his rallies, he had the black people in front. Black oh, but yeah. Trump, yeah, Trump. the two, yeah, yeah, the yeah. two sisters is. And I had a, listen. I had a black friend who was in the military. Okay, he wasn't a close friend of mine. He was a straight guy, very religious. Because one of his friends, that's how I got kind introduced. Of yeah. One of his friends, I used to fool around with. He didn't know he was a Spanish guy, mm -hmm. and he said to me, Mike, you know, uh, he's very religious. So I said, and so I'm not telling him anything that we're doing, and I'm not telling him gay. So I don't know what he thought. So he's a he's a Protestant, and I called him on the phone one time because I haven't heard from him in a long time. And he used to call me up and ask me things about women. You know, ask me if I this girl's driving me crazy, blah blah blah. <laughs> and he, maybe he doesn't know he's gay, whatever. But I didn't tell him anything about me. Right. And he turned around to me, and it got into a political discussion. That he was, was voting for Trump and told me that Obama was the worst president that we ever had. And I said, Are you fucking kidding me? How could you say that, being a black man, bro? How could you fucking say that? This time getting in How was you say enough. That? I went, I went bizarre. A good-looking guy, buffed, mm -hmm. religious guy, very intelligent, very like in the military, like pro-American, but yet telling me that Obama was a good president. And you know what I saw mostly on television, on the on the on the, on the internet. I wish I had a quarter for every time I saw it. You know what they were saying about Michelle Obama? Oh, monkey girl. No, no, no. That's. That that wasn't really a woman. That that was a transgender. Oh, Ashley was. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Did you see that? Did you see that? It's a conspiracy saying that she's actually a transgender because they can't find any. Pregnancy yeah, books. yeah, yeah. She did. Exactly. She did say that. Yeah. Ridiculous. I got I got put in Facebook jail for arguing with some some person. Damn yep. well. Mm hmm. Oh, when man. I heard that. Society funny as hell, bro. And I told you, I saw uh, Obama in the news on mm -hmm. Facebook, and I saw that they wished his his daughters had a get AIDS. That's crazy. Okay. How do you like that? They cut a straight bullet for Meanwhile, yeah. Meanwhile, and I oh. never wanted to see Trump get a, get a bullet to his head. Because I, I, I knew if he got killed, that Trump that Pence would be president. Oh, yeah, and that's sure. what I didn't want to see. Can I take a photo of your book real quick? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm going to definitely uh, post it on my social media. I hope this is the bomb. 
This was amazing. And I'll be happy to come back anytime you want. No, to. Even to speak to Mr. Wolf. Because hey. I know <laughs> they know he's down with it, having a conversation, right, Mr. Wolf? Of course, man. No. Down for nah, Wolf, I'm going to have you on one of these days. What'd you think? Oh, What'd you know. think of what for I said? Sure. Was it like too crazy or what do you think?